to my community over the next few months. Thank you very much. Members, the time for this debate has expired. Call on Government Orders of the Day numbers 1 to 3. Appropriation 2017-18 Estimates Bill, Committee Stage Continued. Anti-Money Laundering and Countering Financing of Terrorism Amendment Bill, Committee Stage. Commerce, Cartels and Other Matters Amendment Bill, Committee Stage. Members, I declare the House and Committee for further consideration of the Appropriation 2017-18 Estimates Bill and for consideration of the Anti-Money money Laundering and Countering Financing of Terrorism Amendment Bill and the Commerce, Cartels and Other Matters Amendment Bill. Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker. Members, the House and Committee for further consideration of the Appropriation 2017-18 Estimates Bill and consideration of the Anti-Money Laundering and Countering Financing of Terrorism Amendment Bill and the Commerce, Cartels and Other Matters Amendment Bill. We turn first to the Appropriation 2017-18 Estimates Bill. There are two hours and five minutes remaining in the debate. When we were last considering the bill, the committee was debating the votes in the primary sector, and Barbara Kuriger moved to report progress. She has four minutes and 50 seconds of her call remaining, if she so wishes. She doesn't. The Mr Chair. Nathan Guy. The Honourable Nathan Guy. Yes. Thank you, Mr Chair. What a fantastic budget this is for the primary sector. Budget 2017. The best ever. $170 million invested into the primary sector. Yesterday I was down on the Tyree Plains there. Many of you will know where that is. For those of you listening that don't, very close to Dunedin Airport. Very, very wet. Just 10 days ago they had a huge deluge of rain. I was out there talking to farmers and my heart goes out to those farmers who are working their way through still flood water that in places is about a metre, a metre and a half depth, deep. And I saw this one very interesting photo of a farmer standing in the pit of his cow shed. And for those of you that don't know, a pit is a bit like a swimming pool, normally without the water, so that he or she can put the milking equipment onto the cow's udder. Well, he was standing almost up to his navel in water milking his cows and he had the pump operating as quick as the water was coming out of his cow shed it was coming back in now that is the overall resilience and resourcefulness of our primary sector they're getting on and doing the job so we announced a small amount of support for our farmers down there to ensure that they can get back on their feet as quickly as possible when I got back from Dunedin last night, I turned on the TV screen in my office and who did I see talking about the appropriations to do with the primary sector but New Zealand First and Labor? Very critical about biosecurity. So for those listeners that were listening or watching last night, I just want to make sure that they reflect on those naysayer comments that occurred last night. In particular, what they didn't acknowledge is that Budget 2017 is investing $18.4 million in the biosecurity system. This bumps it up to an all-time high of $248 million. That means we can do more, review the most at-risk import health standards, that we can ensure that we are educating New Zealanders about the importance of the biosecurity system. If one thing that Myrtle Rust has done it has done a huge amount about educating New Zealanders about what does it mean. Over 700,000 New Zealanders have reached out to MPI or on social media to understand what Myrtle Rust is all about. That has been great engagement from New Zealanders. Ultimately, we want to have 4.7 million New Zealanders that understand more about biosecurity by 2025. Also, this investment will focus on technology. Because soon we'll be in, we will have in place, instead of having dogs, although we'll probably never get rid of them, these are the fantastic beagles that detect all sorts of odours and senses when people come off the cruise line or come off the planes at our airports, we'll have electronic sniffer dogs. So you'll walk down a corridor, you won't even know that the machine is working, and then one of our compliance officers will pop out at the end of the 
uh, corridor and probably infringe you with a $400 infringement fine. So technology is going to play a huge amount in terms of the overall capability of the biosecurity system. Then if we think about the other response, which is really important underway down uh, in the sort of South Canterbury, North Otago area, that's M. Bovis. And that was a very unfortunate find and a very unfortunate disease. And I want to commend the farmer, the, Lewin, the Van Lewin farming operation, for their cooperation. They are working very closely with MPI. We have got world-leading animal health veterinarians working on this response. We've got a team based out of Omaru. There's a huge amount of testing, tracing, happening on these farms. We've got the, farm, the farms in question locked down. Hopefully, we will be able to eradicate. Right now, the process is on containment. And when I was talking to the farmer a few days ago, he said to me that uh, he's delighted by the fact that MPI are working constructively with him. We have got the best veterinarians on board from Australia. We've got the technical advisory group made up of industry and veterinarians working with MPI on this response. Then if we think about the, the farmer meeting that was had on Friday uh, last week, and another one has just concluded today, there's a huge amount of information that's flowing out through Dairy NZ, through Federated Farmers and Beef and Lamb. And it was really interesting to see the positive comments. But, Mr uh, Chair. The Honourable Nathan Gold. Thank you. Uh, what was reported back to me as a result of that meeting on Friday last week is that MPI staff were stunning. They were really, really good. They handled farmers' questions brilliantly in a down-to-earth manner, and that farmers left the meeting feeling a lot more comfortable than when they turned up. So I just want to ensure that communication is reliable and accurate going out to farmers uh, on this particular disease. And then if we think also about the great work that uh, has happened in the biosecurity system. We've now got 14 government industry agreements they've signed up. That's where they come and work with MPI on preparedness and response, sit around the table. We've got an $87 million investment happening out at Wallaceful, a biocontainment facility that will be world leading, so that if we do have these diseases of this kind that we can keep our trade uh, flowing, and of course, M. Vobis doesn't have an impact on trade, doesn't have an impact on food safety. It does have an impact, however, on production. We've got new and modern X-ray machines that we're rolling out at our airports, and we've got mobile X-rays that we are machines that we are using on the cruise line uh, pathway as well. 20 new dog detector teams. A huge amount happening. Then, of course, we've got the border clearance levy that came in under urgency budget a couple of years ago. And Labor and New Zealand First didn't support it. And I couldn't believe why they didn't support it at the time, and I still can't. In every wool shed meeting, cow shed meeting I turn up, farmers are just dismayed that New Zealand First and Labor didn't support a levy that is going to mean more funding focused on the border. When we have tourism growth at about 7 per cent a year, this funding matches the growth in demand. Ultimately, it means that MPI can invest more at the border. And yet on the other side of the House, even the Greens were pragmatic enough to realise that this fund will ensure we do more with biosecurity. But New Zealand First and Labor uh, didn't support it, and that's really, really disappointing. So back to the estimates. I also want to focus on uh, irrigation. $90 million invested in irrigation. These big water storage projects take about 15 years on average to get across the line. That's why we're partnering with farmers and in some cases regional council to get, get them across the line. We only collect and store about 2 per cent of the rain that falls in New Zealand. And that's why I believe Central Plains uh, 1 and Stage 2 that's underway. I see Greenpeace were down there trying to padlock themselves inside the um, irrigation pipes today. I mean, I'm really disappointed with that. They're just slowing down productivity. They're actually slowing down environmental gains because instead of the water coming out of the ground, being extracted from groundwater aquifers, it's coming from river run and snow melt. So you've got environmental benefits. Ultimately, 15 per cent of the water 
that would have come out of the ground is now flowing to Lake Ellesmere and Tiwaihora. That is a huge benefit. There are economic gains. There are social gains as well with water storage projects because, in a lot of cases, water is supplied through to some towns and cities in New Zealand. Also, in this appropriation, uh, Mr Chair, a focus on trade. $35 million invested in trade. Now, the other side of the House doesn't support TPP, and it's great that there is a bit of a resurgence on TPP 11. The $35 million is broken down to a real focus on non-tariff barriers. We're going to create an MPI flying squad to get on top of some of these issues that our exporters face. We're also setting up the Economic Intelligence Unit. That's where young entrepreneurs want to get started in terms of understanding about where are the niche opportunities. So we're going to extract the data sets and make them available. We've also got the regulatory advisory service, that is for some of these young exporters, fledgling companies to know who to talk to within MPI and also to deal with some of the bureaucracy in international markets. We know that language might be one of those, but just trying to understand you know, who to turn to and who to get the information from. So there's some great initiatives that is funded in uh, Budget 2017, a real focus on the uh, primary sector. had a good chat to Boris Johnson when, when he was here uh, just last week, and it was great that we could take him to Kaikoura, and I had an opportunity to talk to him about Brexit and the UK, and hopefully we'll see some benefits from that discussion. The question is that vote lands and vote primary industries and food safety stand part of the schedules. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Uh, we come now to the votes in the social development and housing sector, volume B5, volume 10. The question is that vote building and housing, vote social development, vote social housing and vote vulnerable children or rangatam tamariki stand part of the schedules. Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr Chair. <coughs> um, as, as you've said, the social services... Um